Hello, we're John and Elizabeth. We're on board Corrick. It's about a week before we depart on our six-month trip. We haven't posted very much recently. We've been, we've been out a couple of times, but the, it's been fairly routine. Um, I thought we might just uh, sh talk through some of the preparations that we've had to make both on the boat and off in anticipation of a six-month trip. Um, if, you, if you're really on the into the sailing part of this, this, this episode won't be for you, but if you're um, thinking about doing a long trip, then ideally some of the points that we've gone through over the last couple of weeks and months will be helpful. Um, maybe you won't fall into quite some of the same traps that we have. <laughs> yes, by taking 16 pairs of shorts away with you. Yeah, quite. I hope you enjoy this episode. Thank you. You think about um, how we do the provisions, the victualling for the boat. We don't anticipate, anticipate being away for too long, so we can always go and get fresh um, veg and meat, um, fruit at shops. Um, but it's looking at the dried food and tins. So when we're at the top of Scotland, we may, may not be able to go ashore as often as we think we, you know, would like to. Um, so it's where we're going to store it and what we're going to take with us. So it's going to be tins of things so it's quite easy to do if you're cold and hungry and you want something instantly. So that's what we've been thinking about. Well, our approach to this was to make a, a list of all the things we needed to pack for the journey, including clothes, toiletries, food, cooking equipment, anything that we need. Um, we put those all to one side. Um, we managed to then move them down to the boat and we took a couple of bags that we're going to take with us for going ashore. Um, when we packed our clothes, we made sure they were all folded nice and neatly and put them into the right sort of order. There was a bit of space for civvy clothes, going ashore clothes and things like that, and another space for um, sailing items. We took all of the food and we put the non-perishable items and dry, um into containers so they stop them spilling um, and that seemed to work quite well um, and then last but not least there was a few say uh, cooking utensils um, and that was it it all fitted the most essential so bit of kit is the coronation bunting um, however i got it in the jubilee so it's a different crown but i'm sure king charles won't mind John was able to um, get hold of some yachting manuals, which we'll find quite in, um, useful when we're away. Um, so they're stored here, and we've got a small selection, only a small selection. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then we've got some reading material as well that isn't yacht related. It's beginning to look like we've got nearly the everything on board. There's still a few last bits and pieces, so the clothes we're actually going to sail away in and um, towels and um, that. But by and large, it looks like we've got everything on board. Um, I'll show you where everything is. So up in the forepeak, um, when we're sailing, we'll be using sleeping bags and we've got two there. But when we're alongside and sleeping up here, we've got a topper there and we've got a quilt and some pillows so that should be nice and comfortable and there's a little bit of room up there should we have a loose bag or two. Our wet locker has both of our sets of foul weather gear and our mid layers and there's a little bit of room to hang thing, things up here and so forth. I'm going to keep our life jackets there um, although we put the tethers in the chart table drawer so we can get to them quickly. We've stowed the spare life jackets elsewhere um, in with the grab bag, which is a good place for them to be, but that space there becomes all about towels and cleaning gear and bathroomy type stuff. Well, that should be okay. And in the main saloon itself, um, Elizabeth's going to take the port side lockers, so she's got nearly everything stowed away in there. And for ready use sailing things, so woolly hats and gloves, etc., that locker there. And I am going to do 
much the same on the starboard side, although it's fair to say I don't have quite as much gear and therefore we've got a locker that is um, a little bit spare. As described earlier, we've got all the pilot books and handbooks and so forth there and leisure reading material that side. The other thing that we've done is that we've got no shortage of charts to get us uh, along the south coast and up to Ireland and up to Scotland indeed. We've got our almanac and so forth in there along with a keyboard and mouse for a laptop. Or, um, and then we've got a little bit of space here for portable electrical goods and charging such that we can um, keep them nicely out of the way. And then in behind this locker here um, I've got just enough room to store my camera out the way, which should be fine. And then the final sort of glory hole is the quarter berth, which is um, sort of taking over as the place that everything goes and the outboard motor is stored there. We've got the um, boom cover cockpit tent there and the back door to the spray hood. And finally, last but not least, there is a, a bag into which we will keep um, things like passports and whatnot at the, in a place that we can grab them. Uh, if we need them in a hurry. Um, we managed to get a fair bit of dried goods and cereals and emergency UHT milk and a whole pile of tins down that side. The other side is largely empty, although in that locker there we put a bit of water and beer. Um, the wine's going to go in there as well. So the wine's going to go in there. That'll be, yeah, that'll be handy. And there's another little bit of a space as well, which Elizabeth, uh, just underneath there, I mean, you have to take everything out of that locker, but there's a place to put a whole pile of... Um, wine. Well, what we'll do is we'll have um, the food that we would need in an emergency if we were sort of unable to get ashore for a couple of days, some, some tins that we could um, use for sustenance. So we've been making a list of the few other things that we need to um, pick up and collect, but by and large we've got everything that I think we're going to need for the trip. Um, so that's good news. So we're really happy with the, the boat. We were happy with it all the way through last, um, last summer and did everything that we expect that we're going to have to do. Got every sail up, anchored in every different circumstance, went alongside in lots of places sailed a reasonable distance and um, put the anchor down. Sorry, I mentioned that already, haven't I? Yeah. Um, more onto boys. Um, and the refit in the in the winter um, put some final finishing touches, the spray hood, um, the lee cloths, that sort of thing. Um, got everything on the boat. What has been happening in the background, which has taken, it is probably fair to say, a bit more time than we'd anticipated because we were both going to give up work at the end of March and think well yeah and then we'd jump on the boat and go on the 2nd of April but in, in, in reality, reality we we both sacked work uh, a month earlier than that so we finished in February um, and the last month has been sorting out family Fam family admin finances things, things. Um, houses, packing away. Yeah, we've both moved many times and actually letting your house out is quite a bit more convoluted than packing it up. Packing it up, you can put a problem in a box and unpack that problem a week later exactly. when you arrive. This time we've got to pack it up and we've got to make sure that it doesn't need to come out of the box for six months. Six months, yes. Um, and lots of little things. So. Um, email accounts are tied to internet service providers in places. I got Gmail accounts but didn't use them for very much so we've had to move a whole pile of admin um, and, and there's that whole sort of getting rid of just tons of paper that drifts in through the door and you never mm. sort out. I, I have to say I think it's been very cleansing for the soul. Um, my new mantra is less is more. <laughs> Yeah, um, but we got rid of, uh, the house is going to get let out, um, cars are going to be uh, lent to somebody because we just don't fancy the transaction costs but we know where they're going to stay, all the insurance needs to happen for those sorts of things, all of that takes a little bit longer than you think and we, mm. we drew out a plan probably three months ago um, 
and we're getting there. We've still got a couple of days. We've still got a couple of days worth of work. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to go next Sunday. Uh, and yeah. then hopefully I'll be able to sleep. <laughs> I hope that's been useful. Um, it's certainly been a weight off our mind to get you know 90% of the stuff in the boat and make sure it all fits and we've got a little bit more room than I, I might have over worried about this yeah I think I can squeeze in a few more pairs of shorts yeah that'll be good uh, that's what we need um, so that's looking good everything's on the boat I thought I might have to get rid of a spinnaker but I don't think I need to do that now um, I mean, it's the same what was the point of, of um having that outlay to begin with with two spinning <laughs> if we're only going to take one away with us yeah good point um so yeah so next show. time you'll see us we will be on the high seas um at the start of our six month journey i hope you've enjoyed this thank you very much thank for watching. you very much for watching thank you